Between November 1945 and April 1949, a series of war crimes trials were convened in the bomb-ravaged German city of Nuremberg. The most famous was the first trial, that concluded on the 1st of October 1946 of the top German leaders taken prisoner at the end of the war, including Hermann Göring, head of the Luftwaffe and Hitler's successor since 1941, not guilty. Karl Dönitz, head of the Navy, and the man Hitler appointed his successor after Goering's fall from grace, and Rudolf Hess, Hitler's deputy, until he flew to Scotland on an alleged peace mission in 1941. Rudolf Hess. Nein. In all, 24 former leaders were tried, two committed suicide in prison, and 10 were executed by hanging while most of the others received long prison sentences. Further trials at Nuremberg were conducted by the US. Twelve trials of high-level German officials of the Nazi government, military and SS, as well as medical professionals and leading industrialists. 199 people in total were tried at Nuremberg's Palace of Justice, 161 were convicted and 37 received the death penalty. But you may be interested to know that guarding these war crime suspects was largely in the hands of former SS soldiers and not American troops. This is the extraordinary story of the SS who guarded the Nuremberg trials. The Palace of Justice was one of the few remaining relatively intact buildings in Nuremberg in 1945 when the city fell to advancing US forces. It was decided to hold the International Military Tribunal in the city because it was the symbolic home of Nazism, where the great pre-war rallies had been held. The building was large enough to host such a massive trial and handily had its own prison to the rear to house the accused. Security would be paramount, both around and inside the court, and to prevent the accused from committing suicide or escaping. Regular U.S. troops were assigned to guard the Palace of Justice, drawn from the 26th Infantry Regiment. Other units were military police. All men wore a special shoulder patch that incorporated the only swastika to appear on Allied uniforms, showing the swastika being symbolically weighed on the scales of justice. However, a new unit was to be added to the Nuremberg Trials Guard detail to help the US Army secure not only the Palace of Justice, but a whole series of buildings throughout the city connected with the trials. Incredibly, this unit was raised from the remnants of a Waffen-SS unit. In 1940, the Soviet Union had invaded and occupied the three Baltic states of Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. Stalin imposed full communist rule upon them, as well as the full force of the Soviet police state, carrying out mass deportations in 1941 of, quote, enemies of the people, unquote. Unsurprisingly, many of the citizens of these nations wanted independence, and when the Germans conquered the Baltics later in 1941, they were greeted by many as liberators. Although the Germans did not grant independence, many Baltic state citizens were virulently anti-communist and collaborated actively with the Nazis. In the summer of 1942, the Waffen-SS raised the Estonian Legion, which by March 1943 had a strength of 970 men. It was progressively expanded to a brigade and then a division, partially recruited by conscription. As a division, it fought on the Eastern Front against the Soviets from February to September 1944. In the meantime, in August 1941 onwards, the Germans had recruited Latvians into the Schutzmannschaften, auxiliary police battalions, which by 1944 numbered over 40. 
In February 1943, Hitler ordered the formation of the Latvian Volunteer Legion and subsequently two Waffen-SS divisions, the 15th and 19th Waffen-SS Grenadier Divisions, each of 15,000 men, were founded. Fast forwarding to the end of the war in May 1945, the remnants of these Latvian and Estonian SS units found themselves surrendering to American and British troops. They became DPs, or displaced persons, as to return to the Baltic states then under Soviet occupation again would have meant deportation to Siberia or even execution. But there was no home for them in Western Europe either. They lived in shabby camps or in woods and barely subsisted. A group of Estonian SS officers decided to approach the Americans with an offer. The Americans were happy to accept and enthusiastically use Estonians and other Baltic citizens. Why? Well, immediately after the war, huge numbers of US servicemen were demobilized under the point system and sent stateside, the army reducing massively in size. It was also busy concluding military operations in the occupation zones of Germany and guarding against a future Soviet invasion of Western Europe. The US Army officially declared that recruiting former Waffen-SS soldiers from the Baltic states was okay, because although the SS were an outlawed paramilitary organization, the US understood that Estonian and Latvian soldiers had served in it as conscripts and not as ideological volunteers, which is partly true, though a hard core of anti-communists had volunteered to fight for the Germans. The Estonians and Latvians were in a terrible position, unable to return home, but unable to survive as displaced persons. So volunteering was the one way out of this terrible situation. The US already had Polish and other Eastern European units in its civilian labor corps, but not former SS. The first Estonian unit consisted of only 17 men who guarded the Nuremberg US Army canteen and headquarters. American officers were so impressed by the Estonians that permission was granted to form a full guard company. 300 Estonians, 92% of whom were former Waffen-SS soldiers, were sent to Mannheim for two months training in US military drill, weapons and practices. On Christmas Eve 1946, the Estonian guard company 4221 was officially founded. Commanded by former SS Hauptsturmführer Vitre, the company was formed of six armed platoons and a staff platoon. Each 40-man guard platoon consisted of four squads, and the 30-man staff platoon consisted of medics, drivers, supply clerks, cooks, carpenters, and mechanics. Standard uniform were black Eisenhower jackets with a white belt and a blue M1 helmet liner. A special badge with the Estonian national colors was worn. Primary armament was the US M1 carbine. A Latvian guard company was also formed along the same lines, again with almost exclusively former Waffen-SS grenadiers. The Estonian and Latvian troops were nearly all fluent in English and German, making them particularly useful in guarding the Nuremberg trials, and they were based in the former Reichspartei barracks behind the old Nazi party rally grounds in the city. U.S. soldiers from the 26th Infantry Regiment manned the security checkpoints into the Palace of Justice and also provided guards in the courtroom and the prison and escorted the prisoners to and from their cells and mounted suicide watch on them. Estonian Guard Company 6221 guarded the exterior of the courthouse and patrolled the perimeter. They also guarded the attached prison and various storage depots for petrol, coal, ammunition and food, guarded the YMCA and the swimming pools and residences used by US and Allied prosecutors, judges and senior US officers at the Nuremberg trials. Many had day-to-day -day contact with Nazi prisoners, which seems extraordinary considering the Estonians' background but U.S. officers consistently reported on the company in the highest possible terms. 
During the Berlin airlift, when Stalin tried to force the Americans, British and French to give up their occupation zones in West Berlin by cutting off food and fuel to the millions of Germans living there, the Estonian company was transferred to the forest near the border between the main US occupation zone in western Germany and the Soviet zone, where they secured the most important field storage centers of the US Army before transferring to Stuttgart to guard the local US Corps headquarters. Thereafter, the members of the Estonian Guard Company left U.S. service, and many emigrated to the U.S., Canada, Belgium, Sweden, and Australia. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my other YouTube channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.